Welcome to another episode of Explicit Content. Today I got my good friend Alex. How you feeling today? Yes, sir. I'm good. You know, I'm happy to Alex, be here. Okay, cheer. You know, I'm feeling over you. I'm good, bro. You know, I'm excited to be on Explicit and you know really get down to business and and go crazy. All right, so uh, it's, it's March. Um, basically, at the time, you know, due to coronavirus, you just finished up four years at Morehouse. Mm. Um, three or four years. I know you did a lot of work with SGA. Mm. Um, and then, you know, we did a lot of stuff on the party side as well. Yeah. You want to talk about how you got into SGA and you feel me? Yeah, yeah. Break down to that. Yeah, so years. so I'll say that I got started my my freshman year. Um, you know, I really never had like a, a gauge for, for student government and shit like that. Um, but I got involved with uh, my, my house council freshman year. So I was Huber's president. And, you know, so with that, I was kind of like, you know, I, I see that I can be a leader on this campus and kind of you know, see myself doing things great. And so sophomore year, I tapped in with, with Trey um, on a sophomore class and I was his secretary. Um, and then I served as a junior class president. You know, that was cool. I think that's when like the vibe started to come and, you know, I kind of got into my own little space, you know, kind of learned that, you know, I can not only lead my class, but I can lead the campus too, you know? And then so when niggas started talking to me about, you know, why don't you run for SJ vice president? Um, you know, it wasn't something that was really on my mind. Uh, but I think it was, it turned out to be like one of the best decisions that I done made. You know, I think I done made a lot of connections and a lot of friendships and, you know, really like flip the script on, you know, what leadership can actually look like. You know, it's not, a, you know, a by the book thing. I think we've done everything that leaders aren't supposed to do, but we've done it in a way to where it still fits the picture. So I, uh, one thing, um, you skipped something like in between a, mm -hmm. like in junior year i remember we threw a silent party yeah so yeah um, like i said i want to talk about how you you balance sga and then you feel me your student mm -hmm. life as well so cool. you know getting involved with student body like bringing things to, like silent parties what made you, you mm -hmm. feel me, do things like that so i think so one thing that i learned you know tapping in a junior year um is that leadership isn't about what you can do on campus, but it's also about what you can do off campus. I think there was a lack of of fun. You know, I think the morale on campus was kind of weak. I think the parties at the time were weak. You know, I think the, the party groups were weak. I think the people who kind of were, you know, in control of making this space kind of good weren't doing a good job at it. And, you know, so I think when... Y'all brought that back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I think, you know, when, when I had that initial conversation with you and with Monty and we was like, you know, let's really turn this up a notch. You know, I think our first party... So that was senior though, right? No, it was junior. Junior, junior. Junior, because you remember we threw the, uh, yeah. the homecoming thing. The, the homecoming one. Oh shit! That, that was the 2020. Fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. It, it start like everything started as everything started as a kind of a 2020 thing. Um, you know, it really started as a, you know, let's do things for our class, let's do things for you know, just making sure that we can get this out for them. But then it turned into like, fuck it, let's do it for the entire student body. And I think that's what happened June senior. Year. Um, you know, we really kind of turned this this model of just 2020 into you know pluto and in turn into you know the entire student body being able to really you know be involved in everything that we do so, yeah i i understand that you merged the you feel me best of both for us yeah, type shit. yeah all right so you know with you graduating and stuff what's the status of sga being like mm -hmm. Um, so I'll say the status SJ currently, you know, we're moving into this more virtual space, you know, and so I think currently where what we've been able to do is meet with faculty, uh, meet with the President Thomas administration to kind of figure out, you know, how we can make the virtual experience the best experience possible. Um, you know, things coming up, you know, we're talking about, you know, shifting the the, the grading system, um, you know, trying to make accommodation for students who don't have access to Wi-Fi, who don't have access to laptops in general. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where we're trying to ensure that that teachers aren't trying to take advantage of this and understand that there are students who don't really have the access that they might that everyone else might be able to have. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a little hard, but I think there's going to be a way for us to figure out, you know, how exactly we can all work together to ensure the entire virtual student experience, you know, is one that can actually work. All right. So uh, two things with that one, since you are, like I said, graduating, are you still going to be a student leader and two? Can you talk about the role of a virtual student leader since mm -hmm. we're going into a more virtual space? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, so being, so for me, you know, I think I'll always be involved in, you know, Morehouse and, and Morehouse politics. Um, 
you know, to the aspect of, you know, just being able to see exactly what's going on when we do graduate. Uh, you know, I'll be here to like to like give advice, you know, be able to, you know, be here and mold the young ones who might learn have learned from what Trey and I have been able to do. Um, you know, be there for them in that aspect. You know, I'm not gonna have my hands in the pot too much because you know we're gonna be grown at that point. So I'm not worried about that. Um, and so for the the second question, the virtual student leader, you know, I think it's more having conversations. You know, since we're all gonna be on our phones, gonna be on social media, you know, tapping into as people would say, the clout that you have on social media, you know, to be able to, you know, use those tools to your advantage, to be able to communicate properly, you know, provide transparency, to be able to provide a space where students can come to you on a virtual end, um, you know, as opposed to these physical things where, you know, we've got to go to like this meeting and this meeting, you know, this building and that building, but now it's all kind of confined to like, you know, put it in a Google Doc or put it into like a meeting schedule. And, you know, I can call you at like three o'clock. We can have a 30 minute conversation as opposed to, you know, me having to run from, say, Brawley over to a meeting somewhere over at Clark. All right. You know. All right. So um, as far as graduation, you have an update on that as far as at least Morehouse's commencement ceremony? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah. So as of now, our graduation is December 13th, uh, 2020. Um, you know, that's the only update that I pretty much have as of right now. You know, I think, you know, being able to work with uh, our senior class president, you know, he's the one who kind of, you know, you should go to. If you have, should they get updates for that? Uh, so we do have an Instagram page, the Morehouse 2020 Instagram page, Morehouse 2020. You know, that's where you'll find all updates for commencement and for things relating to graduation. For any other general updates, I would just say slide to the SGA page for, you know, for that information. All right. Don't be afraid to get you, you know. We'll oh, yeah, for sure, that. for sure, for sure. So, um, off of that, well, speaking of graduation and stuff, um, you know, you did a great job at SGA this year, you and Trey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what was like, you know, what was it like working with Trey? Unfortunately, we can't have him here today, but, you know, can you speak on a little bit of Trey's job or you feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the the great thing about working with Trey um, is that we were able to have this, this work relationship, but also able to have this off-camera relationship. Um, you know, off-camera, you know, we was with y'all throwing the parties, you know, Trey would throw the infamous Taco Tuesdays at the crib, mm. you know, things like that. You know, he I was always to to be able to lean on him, um, able to really rely on him as a friend. You know, I think that kind of like built into the chemistry that we we put together, you know. And so that work relationship that we had, you know, with Trey, it, it's one of those things, you know, where you have to kind of like keep him level headed because you know he's somebody where you know he'll kind of get caught up in the glitz and the glamour um you know not saying that's a bad thing but at the end of the day you gotta understand that the work still has got to be done for the students he's done a hell of a job you know lately with you know dealing with all this this virtual stuff for the students you know being in these meetings with faculty you know being able to press president thomas when he's had to um you know for him to be able to do the things that he's done and be able to get in those rooms and those spaces it's been great you know for me though i think it's 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 kind of difficult for me having to step back and kind of you know rely on him sometimes because our jobs are so strenuous and people don't understand that he's still students too at the end of the day. yeah exactly the same workload exactly exactly it's like you know we're students but but we have to be able to put this product out there for the student body because you know, I've never been in it for for clout. I've never been in it for, you know, to get on somebody's line. Like, you know, I never cared about none of that. You know, it was all about trying to put this product out there for the student body and ensure that we're repping them at the end of the day. So, um, like you said, you and Trey put did a lot of work together. What or what is it can, that you could tell me about the mental health bill? Um, mm -hmm. that is, you know, it was implemented this year. It was something that was very new to campus. Yeah, you want to break so, down on that? Absolutely. So the the mental health bill was a bill that was started and created by um, a young freshman, Ari Wright Thompson. You know, I think Ari is one of the brightest young niggas on campus. You know, I think he's going to be somebody that's really going to be a mover and shaker on campus one day. So the the bill kind of entails. SGA implementing a week, one week per semester where the college and SGA will work together to really put a focus on mental health. Um, you know, working with the student services office, working with the disability services office, um, you know, to ensure that we're putting programs and 
things for the for the campus, whatever that might look like from Monday to Sunday or Monday, however so that is might that look. like when uh, they crashed the car this year or they had to. The yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, right, so, so something like that. So something like that. You know, being able to, at the end of the week to put on that car crash event. Um, you know, students to kind of have like a little stress relief thing, but you know, maybe have like a a day where students can come pet a dog. I know one thing that Ari was talking about. Um, was something brand new. It was like a, a a boxing event, but it was with paint. You know, it was like a, it gives you this visual element, but still that physical part to where you can, you know, come up there and beat on the punching bag. But while you beat on the punching bag, you know, you got paint splattering everywhere. You know, I ain't never heard of something like that before. Yeah. You know, so he's been really great in implementing that, and I think that's been good for us to kind of put that bill out there because I think that bill will ultimately help us work with the other RSOs, you know, especially like chill, like chill yeah. um, you know, RSOs like chill to kind of enforce that idea that, you know, we're we're here for the students, you know, and ensure that that's going to take place, you know, for so the entire college. I understand um, through the coronavirus and everything, you all are still implementing things. Can you talk about the what's being implemented for the like you said the students that don't have access to internet or mm -hmm. you know I, you mentioned to me but I don't want to yeah wrong. yeah, so yeah can you talk more on that yes yeah, so as of right now um, we had a conversation earlier today actually a conversation with the faculty leadership council to kind of figure out where we're gonna go with the the grading system. Um, so we threw out a few options. We threw out a, a incomplete option for students to where, you know, if they felt like, you know, they weren't doing well with this last month and a half of the semester, they could, you know, put an incomplete system in. Um, an incomplete would just show up on a report card and they would be able to, you know, fulfill those that incomplete at a later time, you know, next semester, something like that. Uh, the other option was just the influx, the, the, the influx of the curve you know, putting this, this school-wide curve in place to where the lowest grade you could get, I believe, would be a C plus. Um, Trey and I have been down that road before when we had an incident last semester and they wasn't going for it. So that's kind of something that we kind of like didn't want to put on the table already. Um, and then the last one, which I'm personally a fan of, was the the opt-in no pass the opt-in pass fail option. Uh, so with the opt-in pass fail, if taking a current class if you saw that you were like you didn't like the grade that you received in a class, you had the option at the end of the semester after seeing your grade to take a P instead of taking that letter grade um, in turn wouldn't affect your GPA. So say somebody was taking like a, a liberal arts class, any liberal arts class, um, you know, and they got a C plus in that class, but they didn't want that to hurt their GPA. You know, they could opt in to take that P because the C plus is passing. So you could take that pass and you would still pass the class, but it wouldn't affect your GPA. So that's when GPA points kind of, you know, fluctuate and things. So I see it as like a way for the student body to really take advantage of the virtual um, classes happening. But I think it's great. And I think that would be the perfect option going forward for the student body to ensure that, you know, everybody's grades can look how they want them to look at the end of the semester. That's understandable. Um, we appreciate all your work as a student in Morehouse. And, appreciate you know, that. I, I guess I can speak on everybody's behalf. Um, I'm pretty sure we're looking forward to hear the rest of that. So I understand that um, hopefully after the coronavirus and everything that you have a job offer from Boeing. Mm -hmm. um, and you've been working with them the past couple of years. Yep. You want to talk about what you've been doing for them or what you yeah, hope to be doing absolutely. for them? Yeah, so my entire background is, is in aviation. So I think one thing that I've been able to do is kind of mold my entire background around planes and kind of, you know, the business side of planes, but then the, the supply chain side and kind of working on the HR side a little bit too. Um, and, you know, and so being with a company like Boeing last summer, I think that internship opportunity kind of opened up my eyes to the business, you know. So being able to work with commercial, but also being able to work on the manufacturer side, you know. I think with the coronavirus, you know, it's slowed down the supply chain currently, um, you know, because they get a lot of parts from overseas and things like that. And so supply chains kind of been stopped at this point, you know, and they've also dealt with issues within the company, like with the CEO stepping down. So having to hire new people like that. Um, but no, it's, it's a great company, you know, it's a great company. They take care of their employees. You know, I'm still, I'm still, you know, trying to figure out exactly like where I'm going to get placed. I think my biggest thing is placement currently. Um, I definitely have a few locations that I have preferences on. Um, 
but I'm excited. I'm definitely excited to see like what my career will look like, what my life is going to look like after college, you know, being able to make a bag. Um, you know, I think, I think, I think that's, I think that, you know, that's the big thing is just being able to, you know, come out of college, making some serious money and being able to enjoy yourself while being an adult at the same time. I know you also apply um, to be an OVO ambassador. Did you yeah. hear anything back from them? Yeah. From Drake? Nah, bro. And it's crazy. Like, so it, it's crazy when I tell people this story because people really think I'm cap, you know, but like, <laughs> oh, but shit. like the whole OVO, the whole OVO thing and the whole branding behind OVO, you know, I think I really come to really believe in not only Drake, but the product behind it. You know, I think that's what people don't understand. It's not just about the fucking music. Because branding and merchandising is different. Yeah, so, exactly. Know, branding, merchandising, and marketing, that's all. Exactly, thing. exactly. And I think people don't understand that. Like, you know, this, this is his liquor. Like, Virginia Black is Drake. Virginia Black is Drake's liquor. And so something like this, putting out a product like this, and for him to also be able to put out a, a champagne like, like Don Perignon, something like that, um, you know, it's great to kind of see that he's branching out into this this business side as opposed to just putting out, you know, all these hits and things like that. You know, it's kind of great to see him moving into that business realm. So he knows that he's got to be able to make that money. And then, you know, the, the clothing line, having 12 franchise stores, you know, that shit is so crazy to me. No, bro, no, bro. I, like, I mean, I, I know you got a lot of the merch. You That's know, bro, yes. Yeah, like, so my biggest thing, my biggest thing with this man, and it's crazy the way I talk about it, is that I think, Atlanta would be a perfect place for a flagship store. I believe it. Like, I think Atlanta, you know, being able to work in like, being able to have a flagship store over and say like Phipps Plaza, something like that. I think that would be great, you know, to be able to bring like a little bit higher. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Maybe so maybe the market maybe the market's not here for it. I don't know. You. Um, you know, but the 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 branding behind the owl I think is great, and you know I think it's great to kind of see you know the way that that owl kind of represents exactly what he wants to do. All right, that's real. So, you know, it's explicit content. We got to get in the Chuck D book. <laughs> Let me see, Trey. Today we're going to go off of... Uh, okay, okay. Let's do it. We're going to go off March 18th. Okay. So, we got two things. Uh, YG released his debut solo album, My Crazy Life, mm. uh, 2014. Mm. That was a good one. How you feel about YG? Because, all right, so we got YG, and then we got Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib. Okay. That's when they released Pinata. Okay. So let's go on YG and I'll talk yes. to you. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'll do I'll do YG. Uh so my crazy life was actually, you know, one of the fir- was actually the first like the first time I've heard YG. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of him. You know, I think I don't know, his lifestyle nah, I would say Tudum Buddha, I'd say shit like mm, what album is it? Now I gotta pull it up. I gotta pull it up. The red one. It was the the red one that fuck Donald Trump was on. Blood, nigga. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta pull it up. I gotta pull it up. But shit, nah. Meanwhile, I fucked with Pinata. That's when that's that's still brazy. uh, Oh, still that's his still brazy. Still brazy to me was like still brazy to me was like like him being able to rap. You know, I think you know for him to be able to get on those tracks and that one that he had with Wayne and that one that he had with um. With the rest of the crew, Slim for hunting, you know, I think that was was a real body of work and it kind of showed the production behind it. You know, I I remember like Summers being able to like like bang the beat in the car, Type you shit. know. But YG recently, like his last album, I didn't like. Um, so you know, current, going on that Nipsey yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the Nipsey flow kind of works for for certain people, but I don't think it works for YG. Um, you know, so I it's game, different. Think it works for the game. Uh, I think the game should retire. <laughs> shit, yeah, I but think the game should retire. Shit, I mean, Pinata, we talk about Gibbs and shit. Pinata was decent. I remember uh, Thuggin and Deepo, some of my favorite mm. singles off that, or yeah, singles. And then, like I said, this was the first time he worked with Madlib. Okay. And then you know they just released the new shit, uh, Bandana, and that shit was a fucking album of the year last year. It's crazy because I've so, actually never listened to Freddie Gibbs. Like somebody ever. just hit me before we was filming. Like, yeah, can you send me some Freddie Gibbs? I'm trying to tune in. Like, mm. Freddie Gibbs like that. He went to my high school. He's really like people that. keep saying that. I think I'm gonna yeah, tap he in. Really like that. I gotta tap in. I gotta tap in. All right, but look, Cherry, before you get out of here, um, we got some explicit content questions for you. Cool, cool. I'm gonna ask every guest this. Yes, sir. So we are gonna start off like this: light skin or dark skin? Oh, dark skin. All right, Michael Jackson or Prince? Prince. Floyd or Tyson? Floyd, undefeated. Okay. Socks or Cubs? Ooh, mm. I'm gonna say Cubs because they're the only one with a title. Wait, 
White Sox won 05. Did they? Yeah. Sheesh. It's, it's been cool. a long time. Mets and Yankees. Yanks. J. Cole or Kendrick? <laughs> Kendrick. Dave East or G. Herbo? G. Herbo. Flat to drums. Flats. Wigs or sew ins? <laughs> Both. <Ooh. laughs> Adidas or Nike? <laughs> Nike. All right. Power or Empire? Uh, power, for sure. All right. Now we finna get real. Okay. These last three, you feel me? Real deal. Baby or the baby? Baby. All right. Jay or Kanye? Oh. Biggie or Pac? Oh, Biggie. All right, bet. All right, my oh, boy Biggie. Cherry, I appreciate you. And just to let y'all know, Cherry is the only boy, only guest who brought me a, a gift. Yes, sir. So if you want to come on the show, you got to bring me a gift from now on. Look. Yeah. You set the tone, my boy. I appreciate you. Brother. Yes, sir. Hey.